The RBA kept interest rates on hold this week. No real surprises, but the governor has certainly said that there is a rate not out of the question if we don't keep inflation under control. Well, joining me live is News Corp real estate editor Tim McIntyre. Tim, great to see you and good morning. So, yes, rates on hold, good news for some, but uh, we still have to be watching over the next uh, few months, of course. Uh, what do you see over the next handful of months in terms of inflation in particular? Well, uh, Janie, one, one of the best bits of news to come out of the latest inflation data was that the trimmed mean is actually uh, on the way down, which is which is the sort of the middle range of inflation measures that they really pay attention to. So you take out certain things that are out of people's control, like rent or oil prices, and then they look at the things that people are actually spending on in, in a more compressed way. And that's been coming down even as the other parts of inflation have been a bit more sticky. So uh, I've said it before, and, and I really do think that, that there should not be any more rate hikes. Um, and the RBA and the, the governor, they're always very careful to use their language in a way that they don't have to pull triggers if they don't need to. So that little warning, you know, don't go running out and spending because you think there's going to be a rate cut. Um, that just keeps people from, from making them actually have to pull that trigger later. Um, it's a very tough uh, path to negotiate for them, but I think the next uh, movement is down. I think it'll be down before the end of the year, and then I think we'll see some more, more cuts uh, next year. All right, an interesting article that you wrote this week um, titled How I Cut $60,000 Off My Loan With One Call To My Lender. How did you do it? Well, look, like many Australians, I've been guilty of paying the lazy tax at various stages, so... Uh, I had a, a mortgage on an interest-only uh, period, and when it rolled off, I assumed that I was going on to, you know, the the basic, the, the variable rate that everyone else was paying, and you know, life got in the way of a few things, so I was time poor. In the end, I ended up checking the interest rate, and I was paying a lot more than what they were offering other customers. So I, I rang them up and told them to bring it down. Um, they sort of, you know, they argue a little bit, but they, but all it takes is um, is a bit of persistence and the threat to leave and go somewhere else, and and you can actually save some money. So I figured out that, uh, I mean, this was a small loan that I had on a on a on a an investment property, but over the life of the loan, I saved myself sixty thousand dollars just by making a a five minute phone call and threatening to go elsewhere. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? Um, you certainly got to you know be prepared for uh, for what may come and, and you know have all the uh, preparation you know once you make that phone call. But um, there are other components that you have to look out for, don't you, when you change from banks? Oh yeah, sure. Like refinancing is very popular mm. uh, thing to do. It's been on the rise in recent years, and people, um, while being prepared to switch banks, is good. Uh, sometimes there's, there are a lot of costs and pain and hassle uh, in order to do so. So in order to uh, to really maximise your savings, it's often good to to stay with your lender, but make them know, let them know that they'll need to offer some kind of bonus to keep you uh, because they do focus on uh, recruitment and retention um, are their two main things. Then they hope that you'll just won't pay attention while they uh, make your make your rate worse over time. But uh, yeah, if you can if you can act like a new customer, but stay at your same bank, that's probably the best way to save some money. Yeah, and notice in your article as well. Um, you know, there's some certain magic words that you've got to use when you're talking to the uh, the bank, and also that there's really no loyalty is there for uh, for people uh, that stay with the bank. No, that's right. Gone are the days where you know your bank manager is a friend of the family, and and you sort of go and pay him a visit and say, can you lend us a bit more? Can you do us a better deal? Uh, it's very much a, an algorithm, and if the computer says no, you've got to find your own way around it. Uh, the, the magic words that I used were mortgage discharge form. Uh, once you ask for that, that's when that's when they go, oh, oh this guy's serious, and then they then you get a phone call from a separate person who's uh, much more amiable and and attempts to to keep you on board. Um, so you know, if you if you're getting to the point of of absolute no return and the bank's still holding out on you, just say, send me a mortgage discharge form. I'm ready to go. I've got a better deal. And that's when they'll really bring out that secret uh, deal that's under the table that you didn't even know existed until you asked. All right. Yes, don't ask. You don't get. And uh, just before I let you go, I noticed um, there's an article from the uh, ABC there, and it's talking about more than 100 complaints um, from underquoting New South Wales this year so far. So uh, the government, I believe, is acknowledging the problem to um, to the to the news corporation there, and uh, and it's going to be uh, cracking down on repeat offenders. What do you know about this? Underquoting is one of those things that. Uh, most agents don't do or shouldn't do, but plenty do, especially if you listen to the anecdotes out there. The problem is at the moment, so over the last couple of years, 
you know, certain markets may have been flat or, or performed better than others. And uh, there hasn't been, there's been such little supply in a lot of areas that uh, not much has sold over the last couple of years. So um, in some suburbs, you know, agents have to use five sort of comparable sales to tell their vendors um, what they think the property will sell for. And then they run a price guide based off that. Uh, but if not much is sold lately, they can actually refer to sales in the neighbourhood from a few years earlier where the market hadn't grown by 30%. So it's, so they can sort of hide behind those numbers and not actually, um, you know, they know they're underquoting. They know they're offering a guide that is that is less than um, what the property will go for and what the vendor will accept, but they're actually able to uh, to tick all the boxes there. Um, you know, it's, it's just one of those things that a lot of disappointed buyers out there um, and, you know, it's nothing worse than turning up to an open home, agent telling you the guide's sort of, you know, 1.3, 1.4, and then you, you turn up on auction day and the first bid's 1.8 and there goes your whole budget. Mm. Um, and one of the big problems is that if if the government finds an agent $2,200 for underquoting, and that's on the, on the odd occasion that someone actually files a complaint, it goes through the processes and it can be proven and they're fined, they get fined, $2,200, well, guess what? They just made $40,000 in commission from selling that property. So, you know, big whoop. Yeah, good point. Good point indeed. Got to wrap it up. But, um, Tim, always great to see you. Thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your weekend. Thank you, Janie.